Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and we're going to do yet another Zim Explore on tiles, since we happen to be making a leaderboard app, and we have um, some things to take a look at here. Maybe we won't make this a long explore, but it should be fun. Why don't we have a look then? Uh, we haven't launched the leaderboard yet, but you'll be able to find it eventually in amongst our Zap store, which we're working on at the moment. So these are some of the apps that we're launching with. We're calling them Zaps, Odd Robots, Plasma Points, and Dazzle Finger. So uh, Dazzle Finger has three parts, Razzle uh, Leaders and Dazzle Leaders and Razzle Dazzle Leaders. <laughs> How about that? So we haven't got the real data in here. Well, we don't have anybody playing the zaps or the apps yet. So uh, here is our made up data. We press that. And this is a tile that we're working in. And if we hit back, there's basically the same tile again. But with Julia at the lead. Oh my goodness, how about that one? What about the Razzle? Oh wait, Razzle's Julia. Who is Plasma Points? Sam Smith. All right, Sam. And then the Dazzles. Hang 10, buddy. Anyway, we could fill up all of this data. We were just making sure that we handled when there wasn't enough data to fill up the table. Uh, some things to take a look at is we have backing colors, we have uh, alignments, different alignments, and we're also doing alternate colors here. And so that's what we'll take you through uh, and just have a look at this app as well. Okay, so drop this down and move it on over. Here's our code. We're bringing in those images right there. We may as well do an explore right through all of this code. It's quite and uh, quite nice, I think. And we're bringing in our frame here. We're using a fit and we found that that fit is handling mobile okay. There's just a little bit showing on the left and right if we're on an iPad and there's a little bit at the top and the bottom if we're on a, a very thin iPhone. But in general, it all fits well enough for us in the fit mode. We don't have to. We could have stretched all that stuff out with a layout and we've certainly shown that being done. It's just we decided we have a pretty solid structure uh, for our other apps, Dazzle Finger and the robots and stuff. And, and it just worked out well enough. All right. So we are bringing in also the War Games font there, and that's what's making our leaderboard title. But we want to be able to loop through our images and turn those into pics quite easily. So we've got that in a separate array that we're spreading into the array for our assets. So we're, that's the new ES6 spread operator. Takes this array and it adds it into this other array here and all this is available in our assets. Down below, we're making the logo right there with our war games. Remember that if we preload our font like that, we no longer have to do a font object with a, a font name and a source. Uh, we can just bring it in like any other asset and access it with the first part of it there. Don't use the TTF. Well, I think we made it work with the TTF too, or whatever our extension is for fonts. So that's our logo. Then our logo is going to stay there across all of our pages. Here we are making our menu page. So we're looping through all of those picks right here. But those are strings. And we're collecting each string and an index. And then we're remaking picks at i. So that's at the index. We're basically replacing that with a new pick that has the string in it. So in other words, we're turning this array of strings into an array of pick objects there. And that's actually what we're going to do to pass into the list right here. So we're making a new page. The page is not quite as high. That's what we've determined we want the height to be. Uh, it's the same width. So we've got a black page on here that comes almost up. To, we've got double lines right here. So the black page is coming just under the double lines. And there's our list inside of there. So our list, we've um, 
set it up uh, with all of these properties. One thing, if you're sliding a list off and on, as, as we are here because we're sliding our pages, there it slides. Did you see that? Slide back. Okay, there it slides, slide back. Or we could actually, I think that sliding, the list, unless we say allow sliding, we've turned sliding off. So you have to, there's a parameter to actually set sliding true. We haven't bothered because you, you can press on these anyway. And I think that's fine. If we slid, we wouldn't know where to go. Uh, we would we would always just go to the first page after this, which is odd robots. So imagine I slide here and it goes to odd robots. That wouldn't really make sense. So we've turned the sliding off on our page one here, but we do have the sliding on this page. So I'm just sliding back there or we can hit the back button. The uh, what was I going to say? So the page there is not quite as big as, or not quite as high. The height times 0.88. We could have said the height minus some hard-coded value or even the, the, the height minus our logo height minus whatever. <laughs> but whatever. We just kind of eyeballed it there. We then have the new list going on. What else do we want to look at? There's our list. Uh, where is our list? Somewhere is our list of things. Oh, there it is. List of picks. So those are the actual picks that are in there. And I guess that's enough to take a look at. We turned off the scroll bar. Otherwise, there's a scroll bar on the right. And we, we saved that for a little while. We can make the scroll bar not actually even scroll it, but just as an indicator of scroll and that there's more to it there. But in the end, we ended up with this uh, a long, thin sort of looking scroll bar. As we scroll, it, it shows up. And when we stop, it goes away. And it's not too bad. It just seemed in the end cleaner to have it not there. And what we're doing is there's it's chopped off at the bottom. So it's kind of obvious that something else is there. And I think people on mobile are happy enough just uh, assuming that we can scroll this page. All right, so we didn't even bother with the scroll bar. We're positioning that and making it so that when we tap on it, so this is the chainable tap method, uh, that we are telling the pages, object down below, to go to the list selected index uh, plus one because uh, this is the first page. So when we press on the zero index right here, we want it to go to, oh, well, actually, this is the zero page that we're currently on. When we tap on the zero thing here, we actually want it to go to page one in our pages array because this is the zero. So that's why. And what we're doing is we now have all of our leaderboard pages coming up. And then down at the bottom here, right here, is our const pages that holds our page list. Now, the very first thing in our page list is the first page. And then every leaderboard page we make is there. We're saying what how, how to deal with that. You can also, uh, there's effects that you can do as well. Some mobile though doesn't work, or the Androids are a little bit slower on the effects, so we just didn't even bother putting them in. That's things like the, the particle emitter um, makes a bunch of dots or, or lines or whatever. That looks, looks really good on desktops, can be a little bit clunky looking on mobile, so uh, we didn't bother this case, but that'll be up to you to decide on that. Mobiles are getting faster and faster all the time. It's no problem on iPhones, uh, so whatever. This thing is special for the list, and so is that other um, concept for the list. Where was it? Here, optimize. So yeah, I guess we should discuss this. Lists have, they are in a window and they, uh, scroll delicately, we'll call it. So if you're going to animate or move a list, then you need to apply afterwards a list.update. And that will update where all the scroll bar cursors and stuff are and et cetera. There's a bunch of things that sort of relate. So uh, optimize is a slightly different thing though, although it's similar. Optimize will remove objects in the list that are not on the screen. So uh, a list a list is a window, and then a window is, is masking this. So you see how that's masked? 
it turns out if the list is really long, then any objects that are still there are, are still being, I always kind of thought that if they're off screen, CreateJS wouldn't process them, but they are still being processed. So there's a noticeable difference if we have like a hundred objects and those are all off the screen, if we don't, if we remove those objects, then it's much smoother here as we're scrolling on mobile. So we, op we have set optimized to true by default on a list. So if you've got a lot, what happens is if it's not showing, then we remove it. And as it comes on to screen, then we show it. Well, if we animate, if we animate the list off the screen, all those are not on the screen anymore. So when we go and animate them back on, they're actually not there when the page is cached to bring them onto the screen. So there's probably a way that we could have updated or you know brought them back just before we animate, but the easiest way, especially when we only have a few things, it's really not an issue if you've got you know a list of 10 things or even 20 things. It's more of a, an issue if you have 100 things, then uh, you'll note optimize. So anyway, the way we just did it is we brought optimize, set it to false there. I can show you the difference if you want. So we'll set that to true, try it out. True is the default, but or comment it out. Uh, and let's see the difference then. So here it is, there it is, and it's doing its optimizing things, not that we can tell. And if I press on one here, when we bring it back, did you see that? It was gone. So here it is, back, nothing there, and it kind of just flashes in. All right, so that's black as it's animating across, and then it flashes in. So that's not optimal, even though it's optimized. So we'll just turn that off, like so. And now when we press and come back, we can see the list was already there as it's sliding in to the right. Also, what's, what's even worse, if you didn't do this step right here on pages. Once it's transitioned, um, so that's on page transitioned, we want to update the list. And that keeps it around. If we didn't add that in there, then we would get this. Oh my gosh, there's no list. So it's kind of there, it's kind of not there. So that's uh, not good because the list needs to be updated after it gets animated or while it's animated or something like that. <laughs> okay, so this is going to, it, it, it's, it looks like it's in, when it gets transitioned off the screen, that's when we're actually updating the list so that it shows up again, but it's actually off the screen. So that when it comes back on, it's there. So it, it's, not, it's not there uh, if we remove this, it's not even there when we bring it back, but that's that's because it left when we put it away. So we sent it away and then it was gone because the list needs updating when we uh, move it dynamically. So that's list.update. And that's just to prevent trying to update it constantly all the time. It, usually lists are static. Uh, it's very rare that we run into this issue, but on page animation, that is a place when you run into it and there's the solution right there. And it's in the docs, etc. and sort of just makes sense to do it this way rather than all of the extra processing that would be needed to update that list. Uh, you would be surprised, I know this is a Zim Explorer, so uh, you know we could go look if you want, shall we? This is a Zim Explorer, that's what this is for. Let's go take a look at what a list is. Uh, mind you, this explorer is mostly on tiles, but it won't take us but a moment. There's the Zim docs, happen to have them. We were adding some information about this tiling to the tile documentation right here. So those are the previous two explore videos about tiling. This is yet another one, so we should probably get to the tiling pretty quickly. But while I'm here, we can just go zim.list equals. And that takes me to the Zim list here in, in the part. So there's all the documentation on the list, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Here's all the stuff that's in a list. And this is just the stuff that's in a list, various shadings, uh, 
loopings, custom scales. Then we're making this tab. So the list is tabs. There's all the stuff that we add into the tabs. We're handling accordion trees, various ways to tap into things, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And animating to and adding to, and then we get into some of the methods of the lists and uh, properties of the list. But aside from that, the list, one thing that we missed in here, sorry for the major scrolling going on, one thing that we missed in here is what is the list? Well, the list is this thing right here. It's a window. So there we are making a new window. In other words, it's basically a set of tabs, which are a set of buttons, inside of a window. And it is the window right here. Uh, so this whole thing, if you scroll on up, um, no, actually, if you scroll, scroll right to the bottom, can we collapse that? We can. Here's uh, collapse that. There's the bottom. So the Zim list extends a window. And if we take a look at what a window is, oops, space. So here we are in the Zim window. And here is a whole bunch of stuff that's dealing with uh, scroll bar sizes. So there's a lot to do with scroll bar size and how we how we um, scroll up and down and move the list. We're, we're swiping or dragging, swiping on the list. There's various resize things. So all this stuff is in here. And a lot of that is uh, ticker based or, you know, is is constantly checking to see if the scroll bars need to show up and various things like that. And so uh, we don't want to be doing that checking all the time. So that's why we've ended up, and there's resizing for wrappers, uh, how to add content to this. Um, so basically what we've done is said, okay, don't calculate any of that because usually it's just sitting there. However, if it changes location, then we have to do some calculations. And so rather than constantly check to see if it's changed locations, we're asking the developers to do an update if it does change location. All right, well, I think about that's about enough of that exploration, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so we're back to the board here. We were taking a look at the pages. So that was that little extra to do with the pages. This function of making lines is just this little bit right there, making two lines. And we're thinking of that. We just added to our Slack request that we add double lines to the Zim line, as a matter of fact. We don't have a border that is a double line. That's one thing that HTML has that we don't have. We don't have a bevel border. We don't have a, a double line border. We do have dashes. We've also got customizable dashes, which is pretty cool. But we don't have double lines around our borders. But anyway, uh, even if we just had double lines for lines, that, that would be handy. We found that for our apps, we're often adding this little double line thing in there. And so all we would have to do is move this into the Zim line. We are making lines here. But if we move this little function in to double a line or triple a line, maybe we'll let you put in any number of lines, then we could uh, make this easier. We wouldn't even have to do this. Okay. Anyway, back up because we want to get to the part that we're looking at, which is pretty close here. Here's our data that we're making. So we have data for each of our different types of zaps. And then we're imagining our data is just going to basically come in with the name and the value, name, value, name, value, and all that would come from the database. So we have to turn these name values into labels. So that's text data that's coming in. Um, here we are oh, preparing our list for the pages. Our first page is the menu. Then we're making a page for the robots, the points, and each of the fingers. Each time we're passing in a URL so that if you press on that thing, save that, then this should go to the, um, the place. So when I click on robots there, oh, I haven't, it looks like I haven't implemented that. That's right, I haven't implemented that yet. Um, should do that. It would be right in here in the make page. There's the new pick right there. And what we forgot to implement is dot tap, I guess, would be fine. Dot tap, call an arrow function, and that arrow function would go to whatever our URL is, like that. Mm, probably in the same window is okay. Otherwise, we could pass in the next parameter there, which would be 
uh, do we want to open it up in a blank window or whatever. So there's our picture being tapped. And now we refresh here and go to robots. And if I tap on that, sure enough, it loads, <coughs> it loads odd robots. <laughs> My apologies, that made me jump. <laughs> uh, where we have to find the evil robot. Yes, I got the evil robot. Oh, that's uh, very cool. Now I have to find two evil robots. No. Oh, that's not evil. Ha ha ha. Oh, darn. Ah, uh, where's that evil robot? I don't know. You'll have to play the game. Which one is evil? Pum, pum, pum. Okay, anyway, that's uh, enough of that. So, uh, good. Are you or else working? All right, what else are we doing when we make a page? So this is our make page function right here. We are preparing our, our background, so the page itself. We are putting a new pick at the top of the page. We're creating a board with the data. We're centering that on the page and moving it a bit. And then we're adding a back button on the bottom. And when we tap on the back button, it goes to page zero and it goes to the left. Okay, so that is on each of our pages here. As we press on plasma points, that now we go to plasma points. But if I hit back, it goes to page zero, which is our menu page. Not bad, huh? So how do we create the board? That's where that's where we really wanted to talk about, or what we really wanted to talk about is how did we tile that board? And here we are, we're all ready. We return that page because that page is being returned into this array right here. And then down below here, we just pass that array into our pages and tell it to go with a transition of slide. Um, we could pass in different transitions as mentioned there. Isn't that amazing? We just made a whole bunch of pages right there, a whole bunch of pages just from this array right here from takes that data. There's our menu page. Oh my goodness, that is so easy. This app is just so easy to go back and forth between any number of pages, all with different data in it. Isn't that amazing? So let's see how we did that tile now. Um, that's right in here. We're creating the board. We're receiving the data. First of all, we don't have to do this, but I like it. With Zim style, it might be that we had some styles that were expected to be working. And yet when we called this function, if we just go and create a style, we only have one style in Zim. So if we go and create a style, it would overwrite any style. So after we call the function, the, style, the previous style would no longer work. So what we're doing is we're remembering uh, the, the style before this function was called. We're remembering the style as less style. You, could use any, you don't need to put anything there if you don't want to, but uh, you can if you want. And then after our function is done right here, we're recalling the last style. And that allows us to style anything we want inside of here without affecting um, style from the outside. So if you didn't put in an ID up above, it would just look like this, and that would work too. Okay, then it just stores it as a default style ID or something like that, and, and then we would do that. But possibly if outside of this function we were already remembering a style in the default ID, then, then we would have problems. So just to be kind of um, sure here, that's that's what we're doing. As a matter of fact, what might be better is something like that, although it's not really remembering the create board style, so that might be confusing. But anyway, I know that there aren't, you know, we're not already trying to remember styling. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I don't even think we had a style going. Uh, no, I don't see one. No. So up above here, before we started calling these, I don't see any styles. And it doesn't really matter about down below. I don't see any styles down below either. So this it's kind of a mood issue in this case. But um, we put it in there because that's uh, you might want to do that if you're calling functions like this. OK, so we're making a board that is a container. And the reason we're putting a container there is that we can then return that container. And it's all in one. So our leaderboard thing just gets returned. And then it gets placed uh, on our page right here. So there's the create board. 
So whatever container gets returned there, we're just centering it on the page and moving it. All right. Before we turned this into a function, we had manually made our first leaderboard. So this started off as a hard-coded leader, just a single leaderboard, and we just added the two parts. There's two parts here. The first part is this tile right here, which is tiling the background rectangles. And then here's a second tile right here that is tiling the text on top of the background rectangles. So we had just added both of these parts to the page one or like you know, whatever page we were making, I guess it was page two. Uh, but in this function now, we're adding them both to the board. Okay, so let's go. We're creating a spacing there that, or you know, a variable for a spacing and that gets used in a couple different places throughout. Here are the widths that we're going to be using. And in the last two, the last two explores, we were tiling components and we talked about tiling different column widths. And when we did that, we hard coded those numbers and we said, oh, if we were really doing that, we would store them in a variable. And so that's what we've done. We've stored them up here and then we're gonna use them throughout. And there's our height of our tiles. We're first of all making the background rectangles. So we're setting the width of those rectangles to the series. In the end, I think in the previous example, we actually set call size and then we added those rectangles to the call size. In the end, we realized, oh, that was silly. We didn't need to do that. If we just make our rectangles the call size, basically, then and tile it, then it will tile with column sizes already of those, those rectangles. So that was not needed. But in the second one down here, we will need to do, when we're tiling uh, our labels, we'll have to tile them to that call size. There is an option, and uh, let's see. Okay, I'll mention it now. There is an option to tile labels that have sizes set. Uh, that would be label size, so not, not width, but label width. Yeah, that's it, label width not width. width uh, I don't even think a label has a width um, property, but anyway, the label width property. And that will create a label of that width, but it also, we could then set backgrounds on that. So possibly we could have tiled labels with backgrounds and not even bothered with background rectangles. However, if we were going to be tiling anything that didn't have backgrounds, like I don't know, most things don't have backgrounds. Labels just happen to have backgrounds. But if we were tiling components like buttons and sliders and dials, they don't really have the ability to put backgrounds on them. So then we would have to tile the rectangle. So that I would just leave it tiling the rectangle. Anyway, let's head on back here. So we have a series of widths. We have the height that was suggested. And here are the colors. So this is how we're handling tiling different background colors. What we're going to do is we're going to make the first rectangle in our series yellow and then white and white, although it could be, uh, this is sorry, light and this is lighter and lighter. And then we have light and light and then lighter and lighter and light and light. So that's sort of alternating there. So the first one is yellow. The second one, the first time it runs the this second one, it's going to be light. The next time it runs it, it's going to be, um, or sorry, that this is the third color, it's going to be light. But then when it loops through this series again, it's, it's gonna end up picking lighter and lighter. And then when it loops through again, it then picks light and light. The reason we started with light is the very first line right here. Uh, afterwards, we changed the top ones to, to yellow. So let me comment that out and show you what it would look like. Okay. So we're starting with the first one being light, the second one being lighter, because we're going to overwrite this with orange. And then we wanted this one, the second one, basically, to start with lighter. <laughs> uh, we, we had originally done this one. This is kind of cool. Dot every five. So just keep, it'll do light five times and, well, Okay, it'll do light five times and then it'll do lighter five times. So this is our thinking initially. 
every five. So half of them, we want half of them to be light and then half of them to be dark. Oh, this will be the opposite though, won't it? So what's happening is the first five of them are light. The last five, or almost the last five, are lighter. I want it flipped actually. So the light ones are the first five. And take a look. Uh, it's like, oh, wait a minute. Since we started with the name one, the very last one is wrong. We want to kind of shift that. So I scratched my head a little bit. How do we shift that? And then just realized, oh, all we need to do is swap these guys. Uh, and swap these guys. And go every six, like so. And when we refresh here, Now the first bunch of them are light, one, two, three, four, five, six to here, and then the last six or whatever I mean, it goes off the screen are dark. So that works fine. And here we are bringing back the top yellow or orange uh, top to it. And you get this. So basically that's highlighting the first five as being light and the last five as being a darker color or whatever you want, it's just slightly darker in this case. So as you can see with the series, we have a lot of control over what we're doing. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but the series has a whole bunch of things. So this is a Zim Explorer after all. So we're gonna just take a quick peek at the series. So here in the docs, we go series like so and there's examples of what the series is doing. Basically, you put uh, things in a series, like red, green, and blue, and every time you call the series, that's us calling it, that would be red, this one would be green, this one would be blue, and then it would go back to red, etc. If you want, you can take an array and pass in the array into a series. That's how we started off with the series, is it had to start off as an array and you pass it in, then we said, oh, okay, wait a minute. We'll also allow you to just make the array elements like that. So you can either pass in an array, which is what we're doing in our example here. For instance, there's a series of um, an array of widths. Remember that? Where did we make that? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> so was it all the way up here? It wasn't that far up. There it is, <laughs> just right up above it. Okay, so we're making an array and passing it into the series. That's fine. In this case, we're not passing an array in. We're passing three elements in, uh, three parameters in to the series. Okay, and there's some examples of that, and you should go through those examples. It's very kind of, it's, it's, I think it's important to know how to use this series. And then we can also pass in either an array, an item, I don't know what the first, item or array results will be called. Okay, yeah. Uh, or we can do min and max and step as well. So there's, uh, we can get a series of numbers by saying, what's the minimum number? What's the maximum number? What's the step? And that will actually make a series that are just of numbers. But what's cool is these extra methods that happen after. So we've already seen the every. There's also steps. So that affects the steps uh, defaults to one, but we could move by two steps in, in the series or if we wanted to. Anyway, um, then we can jump. So if we call something, we can jump to a certain index in the series array. We can re reverse. So that would do in reverse. We can bounce, which would go forward and backwards. Flip uh, goes to the end and then it goes into reverse. So it does the last one in the first. I don't know. I can't remember. One, one of them is going to bounce and not do the last one twice. I think flip does the last one twice, but you can read about that. We can constrain it to keep it within bounds or not. There's a uh, random mixed and shuffle. So, wow. Uh, see how, how there's lots of examples here. So shuffle would shuffle it and then it repeats that shuffled order over and over again. So when it comes back to the beginning again, it will still do the original shuffled order. Whereas random will randomize it all over again and mix randomizes it, but will not repeat the last one in the first one. You see the difference? So if, if you go through a, a series of uh, colors and then you re-randomize it, it's possible that the next one after will be that same color. 
which maybe you don't want. So mix would prevent that from happening. Okay, so there's a lot going on in series. And as you can see, series can be used here in style, or we could have passed this series right into the color of the rectangle right in here. Um, right. And anyway, it's a zim v value. So anywhere that zim v values can be done, for instance, in a an interval, in an interval, if you intervaled with a series, check this out, a series of times, it would do those intervals in that series order. So say you could play music with it, basically. Um, you could have a timing set out, like uh, wait one second, wait five seconds, wait one second, uh, wait seven seconds. And then it would do one second, five second, one second, seven seconds, one second, five seconds, one second, seven seconds. And each time that could be playing a different note or something like that. Uh, you can have a series in an emitter. So everything that gets emitted would be emitted in a series. So first time it does a rectangle, second time it does a triangle, next time it does a um, uh, whatever, a rectangle again, then a triangle, then a circle, then a rectangle, you know, etc. So the series would be um, whatever you want it. All right, so we're using the series for a couple things here. One is basically the width of our columns or of our tile, and the other is the colors of it. But we also do a series down below in this one, I believe, of alignment. So let's see how that happens. And I mean, I think in CSS you have things like nth child and stuff that's supposed to let you handle things like that. And I, mean, I still don't know. You, I'm still not quite sure what exactly what that's doing. I'm sure if I did it a lot, I would, but heck, this series is just so much easier. <laughs> just looking at the three. Look, this is what I want you to do. Center it, left it, and right it. And I, I mean, I don't even know how to do that yet. I've been working with CSS for years. If you put me into CSS, I can't do that. <laughs> so I know it can be done, but I have to look it up every time. Um, anyway, so what else are we doing? Uh, we're replacing the top row. So we just... We just tiled the rectangles, basically. So we made a new rectangle. Note that we didn't even put anything in the rectangle. It's all being handled with the style up above here. And we want three columns and 11 rows. And we're using the spacing that we suggested up here of four. We're adding that to the board. And then we're looping three times and changing the backing uh, what the heck is this? Backing dot items. So backing is the tile. So the first three items basically we're changing it, their color to orange. So go get items at I and change it to orange. All right. Here we are preparing the labels. Are you doing okay? You're always welcome to get up, um, put this on pause, stretch, get a cookie. Yeah. Do you want to get a cookie now? Come back. We're nearly done though. So I figure we got another, oh, it depends, but I think we got less than 10 minutes left. So sound good? All right, I'm glad you're here with us. And please, if you're still listening to this and using Zim, then you should join us in Slack or Discord. All right, and, and say hello, don't be shy. What's, what is it with the nerds of today? <laughs> you don't have to be a nerd. We made Zim for, for people other than nerds. Maybe you're not a nerd, yay. <laughs> Perhaps you're just a normal person. <laughs> anyway, if you're a nerd, that's great too. Uh, we love you. But uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, please join us in Slack or Discord and um, say hello, ask questions, get involved. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> was gonna be 10 minutes left, but now, <laughs> 10 minutes left starting now. All right. So prepare data and make labels. Okay, oh, note that with our data, we did not put what number numbers we are in our data. So uh, we're missing one, two, three. We had initially put those in the data, but then realized, okay, we don't really need that coming into the data. Uh, when we go to the database, we can probably arrange this. It might've been a little bit nicer if, if this were an array, uh, this were an array or something like that. I mean, maybe. You know, but it doesn't matter too much. We, we can handle it. So we'll have to grab it from the database and output it in this format. Uh, the fact that it's on multiple rows doesn't, 
doesn't really matter. We just did that, so it's visual. So can you imagine that this is going to come from the database and it's going to go, blah, it's going to all be sorted, and that's with SQL. We have ZimBase for that too. ZimBase is works in MySQLi on the database side to make MySQLi one third the size. <laughs> can you believe that? So we did some analysis on that, and using ZimBase is a third the size of uh, MySQLi. Still uses MySQLi, but we just made some functions that handle it. It's all done in the end. It's not even done with MySQL anymore, really. It's just done, it, it's like MySQL, but it's done with um, arrays and uh, multi-dimensional arrays, or whatever, the, not multi-dimensional, um, uh, associative arrays. Okay, so anyway, that's on that side. We'll, we'll turn to that in just a bit, but usually it's best to make your front end of the app just with some fake data here. And so here we've got some fake data and we don't have to worry about the database stuff. Once we get it working with fake, fake data, then we can hook it up to the database after. Okay, so we're down here. That was our data up there. We talked about the style of that. That's Fine. And now we're preparing that data. Okay, so we're looping 20 times because we have um, up to 10, we have up to 10 lines, but our data might not include up to 10 lines. There might only be five people who have played so far. So we're preparing for that right now. If there isn't any data at I, then we're going to make the data at i an empty string. So that basically is filling in the blanks. It will end up taking our data here, and if there's no data there, it'll add that, and then it'll add that, and then it'll add this, and it'll add that, until it, it gets up to um, 10 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's only eight of them. You see why we did 20? It's because there's going to be 10 lines, and we're basically filling in any blanks there. So, with quotes. So that's what this one does. And then this one loops 10 times, and it splices at i times 3. So if i is 0, that means it's going to splice at 0. It's going to delete 0 elements, and it's going to insert i plus 1. So now all of a sudden, the first thing in the array is going to be 0 plus 1, which is 1. So it's going to end up at the beginning of our array, adding the number 1. Then when i is, that was when i is 0, when i is 1, it's going to splice at position 3. It's going to delete 0 from there and add 2. Then it's going to splice at position 6 and add three, etc. Well, what we found was rather disappointing. If we don't do this first step of adding in the blanks, I thought the splicing would extend the array. So we would go out past any empties and just insert the numbers and that would be fine. But here's what happens when we do that. So I've refreshed. So here's number one, two, three inserted, four, five, six inserted. Then it gets, it inserts seven, and the splicing seems to give up. It doesn't go, <laughs> it doesn't go past the end of the array as expected. It just sticks <laughs> at the end of the array. So what do you know about that? It was like, okay, I didn't know that happened. I looked at that and scratched my head and go, okay, well, I guess we'll have to fill in blanks with quote quotes so that the splicing will splice all the way down. And so that was this adjustment. This is all just raw JavaScript right there. And so now we're adding the blanks and we can see that now that the blanks are in here, the splicing of the numbers into the front of that data continue just fine. All right, well, you learn something every day. I almost don't want to learn that. It's like, what, come on. Because you can, if you want, in an array, I, I would have thought that it, it figured it out. I could say data at 33 is equal to 12. Is there a data at 33? Uh, yeah, actually there might be. <laughs> probably be this very, that's the very last one. I think there's only 31. So we have 
10 columns of three, except it's actually 11 columns of three because we have our header. So that would be 33, but the index starts counting at zero. So yeah, this should, this would add 12 to the end of it. If I go 43, if I can hit 43, it would add um, a whole bunch of blanks, basically null, 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 nulls in there, but it would put 12 at index 43. So I'm surprised that the splice can't splice at an index higher than the array currently goes to. But I guess that must just be a thing. <laughs> so be it. Uh, anyway, then what we're doing is we're unshifting. So that adds, unshift will add things at the beginning of the array. So remember our arrays up here didn't even have the, this top bit where it's the number sign, the name, and the score. Hopefully you're doing all right. <laughs> I don't know if we got to our 10 minutes. I think I remember saying at the beginning of this one, this was going to be a short one, and then I, I tricked you. <laughs> Such as an explorer. So where'd we get to down here? Anyway, we're unshifting. That adds these three things to the beginning of it. Be careful. Do not unshift like this. Well, I suppose we don't have to unshift anymore. I could have... I could have um, spread this into the beginning of the array. But anyway, whatever. So don't unshift a new array. That'll actually put this array at the beginning of that other array. So you want the separate parameters in there. That adds them to the beginning. Then we loop 33 times. Which is kind of, yeah, that's right. 33 times, although it starts at one, or it starts at zero and goes to 32. But anyway, we get our i, we set the data at i equal to a new label. So we're doing what we did with the pictures above. We currently have an array of strings. We are going to turn those into an array of labels. So uh, that's basically what we, exactly, almost exactly what we did with the picture. We set data at i, so that's back into the same array, is equal to a new label, which is either Oh, okay, we don't need to do this anymore because that's what we were doing when we had empty spaces, but we no longer have any empty spaces, so uh, there will always have something there. So just whatever, because we've added quote quotes to in, instead there. And a size and a color, so be it, good. We could, if we wanted to, do a series here. Uh, watch this, let's do a series of I wonder if I would like this better. Let's go light, comma, dark, comma, dark on that and change this from yellow. Where's our background colors? Yeah, they should have been in there somewhere. There they are. Instead of yellow, what color would we want to start with? How about dark and, or purple? Just gonna be too much. Purple. And we can go to that's fine. Instead of orange across the top, we could go yellow across the top now. Kind of like the yellow because leaderboard's yellow. So across the top was orange. We can go yellow. There. Yellow. Oops. No. <laughs> that's like jello. There we go. Yellow. <laughs> that's funny. I feel like President Bush anytime I can't spell something like yellow or jello. Okay, F12. Nice error somewhere, missing a round bracket after line 146. Well, no wonder, look at all those brackets. So, this is a label. Okay, I must have ended up using a round bracket at the end of the series, that happens sometimes. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> okay, eh. what the heck happened? Oh, all, oh, okay, we got a delay pick maybe on that. Let's just have a look. Right, forgot to re-mention the delay pick in here. Otherwise, it won't get applied properly. And what happened with our labels? Series of light, dark. Uh, that's just on making labels in, okay, right. So we're in a loop now, which means we want to pull this out and not define the series each time. Uh, const colors, hopefully we haven't used that already, is that series and just add colors there. All right, 
Let's try this again. And there we go, except the very first one's the wrong color. I don't know, maybe if these were white, do you like this one better than the last one we had? I'm not sure I do. I was just wanting to show you that we've now adjusted the uh, the colors of those. Unfortunately, our very first one is the wrong color. We'd have to probably deal with that individually. But let me try changing that instead of light. How about white itself? Because the light on purple is not coming through for me. I'm not sure I like the purple. But I kind of am liking the anchoring. I don't. I don't want the last batch to be the dark in the first batch. I like the alternate colors. I think, I don't know, maybe it's it's connected too much to the back button on that. I think so. Let's see how if it looks tidy with a darker in there. So we're going to put the white on the darker. We're going to swap these guys again. I don't know if I can, I, I'm just started using VS Code, so I don't know if I can multiple swap yet. Well, why don't we bite the bullet? I'm going to pick those two and pick these guys as well and try a swap. Yeah, did it. Okay, I want to start with the light. Okay, so we can do multiple swaps. That's nice. Uh, and take off the every six. Take off the every six there. And we went to gray already or did we? Where was it that we were changing the gray? Light, lighter, purple. Oh, no. okay, so darker, not gray. All right, let's have a look. Boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Nah, even, even with that one, I think it's a little bit heavy on the left or something like that, so I don't like that. Can we go to orange? Let's try orange. I think orange is a stronger top title. So let's go back to how it was. <laughs> With yellows down the side. Yeah. Uh, all right. Should we do an undo? Or Okay, this part's right. It was just this becomes yellow. The top becomes orange. And we don't bother doing the colors here. So just wanted to show you that we could change the colors. See how these guys are, are white now and these ones are dark. So we could change colors with the series as well if we so desire. But we're not going to bother. And we'll just change that to uh, dark, I believe it was. And we're back to how we had it before, probably. Mm, yeah, okay, that's fine. All right, so we're back to all, all the same colors there. Okay, so those are our labels being made. We've prepared the labels. They're all sitting now in what in whatever our data is, data at I. Nope, data at I. Why did we do data at I? Oh, yeah, because we're receiving our data here, and we're passing in. Data for the robots, data for the points, data for Razzle. So we pass in data for the robots in the first page, data for points, data for Razzle, and we're replacing those with labels. So we're just saying, hey, whichever, whatever data we pass in, which will be an array, take that and remake the labels, loop through that and remake labels um, instead of strings. Okay. Then we're setting our style for our last tile. So here we are, we're, we're nearly there. We're setting our style uh, for alignment, center, left, and right. Center, left alignment, so the name can spread out there, and right alignment for the score. Usually scores are right aligned, I think they are anyway. Yeah, otherwise you can't quite tell if one score is um, bigger in terms of its placement. You know what I mean? Like, if these ones were lined up with the nines, we would look at that and go, uh, that doesn't look quite right. I think that's the case. And if we centered, so here is center for, your center for all of them. It's not bad. I mean, you could probably get away with this. I, I, don't, I don't think it would matter too much, but here's what it looks like centered for all of them. 
mm, you know, eh. <laughs> um, we've shifted this over a little bit. So now if we're, if we're centering, we don't need to shift. So that happened when we made those labels, I think. Uh, no, not the labels. We did a move of 15, so I'll just move zero. Okay. See that in just a sec. Okay, so there's absolute center now of that. But I don't really like the way that the beginning of the name go gets um, uh, masked there. So that's how we've decided to handle this. We could handle it by removing the letters, like limiting the, the length of that. That would be too hard to do. And then always make sure that, you know, we just cut off the letters. But what we decided to do was start it on the left and mask it so that if it's too long, it just bumps into that. And I think that'll be how we keep it. I don't really like the numbers centered. Like I said, it's a bit harder to figure out uh, that this is four digits and that's three digits. So uh, that's why we introduced left aligning these ones and right aligning those ones. Our vertical alignment stays at center. Our call size is a series based on the width. And then we do the delay pick, so that gets applied. And we uh, are handling row size by H, whatever that is. The, oh, that's the height of it, row size plus the spacing. So that's kind of important. We want the general height, but because we added spacings to, this is the height there, but we added spacings right here, that's a vertical spacing. Right, and unique. So unique will mean that it'll pull from the data and doesn't uh, doesn't uh, pull from it randomly because if we didn't have unique, it would see this array and it would randomly pick from the array as in V value. So here we are unique true. That means treat the array as a unique um, set of things, do them in order and don't clone them. Okay, so that turns the cloning off. We are locating that at the same place as the backing. Uh, so the backing was the rectangles and we're locating this tile right on top of that. And you can see how exactly that matches up very nicely. And did we fix that? Save that and refresh here. Let's have a look at it again. No. All right. So here's what happened. When we left aligned, it aligned our letters right to the left of that column. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the items 2D. So basically items 2D calls will get an array of these values right here. So normally when we tile things, it's we have a row and then we have a call, call, call in the row. Then we have another row, then we have a call, 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 an array of calls. So that would be the normal one called items 2D. It would be an array of rows. So this would be the first thing in the array, second thing in the array, third thing in the array. And then in that array of rows is a call, call, call. So another array of, of the columns. But we want to get the columns first. So that is like this. First of all, if you just do items, then you, you get an array that looks like this. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So it's just a linear array of all of the things like that. If you want the... Uh, array 2D or items 2D, then you get an array of those three, an array of these three, an array of these three, but we actually want it reversed. We want items 2D rows, which, or is it calls? Items 2D calls. So that gets an array of those things, an array of these things, an array of these things. And we're just wanting to take the array of these things and shift them over a bit, and we want to do the masking as well. So we're going to get not the zero call. That would be the very beginning ones. Those are the numbers. Ones would get the second columns. And then each time we're getting the label that's there, we're also getting an index. Do we need the index? No, it doesn't look like we need the index. Oh, yeah. OK, I know why we thought I needed the index. I thought I needed it to access the same one in because what we're doing here is we're masking that label with whatever rectangles in the backings so I thought to access the same the equivalent rectangle in the backings 
um, tile. I would have needed the eye, probably could have done it that way, but I have an easier way now. So we just grab the label each time and we're going to move that label. Oh crap, what was it, 15? I think that was in there. Let me refresh here. And there we've moved the label over. And then we're also doing the masking. So let's have a look at this. If we didn't, if we didn't do the masking and we just moved it, it would end up looking like this. There's the name and it just keeps on going and bumps right into the numbers. We might in the end, I don't know if our score is ever gonna be so big that it might overlap here. Uh, we'd run into problems if we were masking though, wouldn't we? Because then it would mask the beginning of the score, which would be important. So we'll probably make sure that that just never happens. I think we'll be fine. But anyway, we don't want that to happen. So our solution is to set the mask of the label to the backing items. That's the general array of whatever the tile num of the label is. So when you when you tile something, this element gets a tile num of zero. This element gets a tile num of one, two. This one gets a tile element of, or a tile num of three, tile num of four, five, six, seven, et cetera. So uh, basically we're saying um, whatever the tile num of the label is, uh, whatever the tile num of the label, that's what backing at the items are, because that'll ma match those things. So cool, huh? Yay! So we're hiding any extra text in there. And that was the end of that. So we make a matching tile of the letters, and we're masking um, that middle bit. In HTML, let's see, I was kind of thinking, what would this be like in HTML to do this? Uh, it would be a probably a table you would use. There would be lots of TDs and TRs and you would have to loop through that and kind of make those TD, TDs and TRs. Probably it wouldn't be the end of the world. Backing colors are not too bad. We could have set those as well. So I'm sure that would have been fine. And then this thing right here where we're doing the masking of that. Oh, haven't done the masking of it. Let's save this. This thing right here where we're doing the masking would be uh, what's that overflow? So our, our div, I don't know. Can you do an overflow on a TD? Probably can. Yeah, I probably could um, set the TDs to have an overflow on them so that uh, you don't see that kind of thing. Make sure there's no scroll bars. That uh, would have been fine to do in HTML as well. I think alternating the colors and adding colors and stuff, uh, a little bit easier to do with a series as far as I'm concerned. The rest is kind of similar. With the table cells in HTML, you're lucky you've got a backing color on that uh, with ours. The reason why we don't do a backing color, although as mentioned, we probably could have just ran with one table with the labels having backing colors and alignments on the labels, and we would have ended up just, each of these would be a label with the backing color. It gets a little bit finicky with padding and stuff, but it wouldn't. I think it would have been possible to do. But if we were trying to say put icons in here or something like that, then we wouldn't be able to do a backing color unless we put um, in a second or a first table in there. This all took me uh, ten minutes to make sort of thing. Like the 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 gist of it, there was some H, there was some uh, JavaScript preparations to be able to dynamically do this that may have took a little bit longer. But the actual table part took ten minutes, and I can guarantee you in HTML. That kind of stuff just doesn't take 10 minutes. Um, the, 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 layout, the layout of this, being able to go back and forth and handling this kind of stuff, uh, just to be, able to, to be able to center this stuff on here. Um, again, a lot less time in Zim. Mind you, I'm pretty good at Zim, but uh, I'm also pretty good at HTML, and I still know that this would take a lot, a lot longer in HTML to build. My guess is something like at least three times as long, maybe even five to ten times as long, and a lot of complaining. I don't complain. I hardly complain anymore. Sitting inside a Zim, I do things, and I marvel at it. You know, I kind of go, 
Oh, that was easy. <laughs> uh, but it does, I, I know it takes practice and there is a lot of things in here and that's why we're doing this explore. That's why you're here. There's a lot of things in here that you would never guess to be able to do series. You would never guess at needing to um, turn off this uh, list.update on it. And I mean, sorry for that, but there are reasons for these things and that, that, that we're doing complicated things. You don't, um, doing complicated things and we're doing them in efficient ways. So sometimes it just takes a bit of knowledge to do something more efficiently. Uh, for for your whole app basically and now your app will run run better all right woohoo that was so much fun to take you through there on this zim explore hopefully you've um you've been enjoying this i certainly have and this has been a zim explore with uh, dr abstract that is me isn't that fun we have an old this this is this little one by the Dr. Abstract guy there. I, I can't I don't think you can see my cursor. But the one by the Dr. Abstract, that's the Zim Foundation for Creative Coding. So anytime, like in our schools or something, we want to kind of have this um, organization look, that is the Zim Foundation for Creative Coding. And you're welcome to donate, and any donations that you guys make will go to helping Zim reach the people. And then up in the top right hand corner is the very that was the second logo of Zim, back in Zim Duo, which was sort of like a kid's blocks or whatever. Uh, and we've since changed that. We keep that logo for Zim School. So, or sorry, Zim Kids. Zim Kids. Zim School has the slightly older version of the logo, and now we're at the just the letter Z. All right, have a great time. Cheers.